Hello and welcome to episode 7 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at debugging your ARM templates. Inevitably when you write templates you're going to hit errors. And when you do, if you don't know what to look for, the experience can be quite frustrating. And so today we're going to have a look at how you can deal with errors, how you can investigate them to find out what the cause of your problem is and hopefully fix them. The first thing to be aware of with ARM template errors is there are two types of errors you might see when you run your template. Pre-flight or in-flight. So pre-flight errors are those that occur at the time the ARM fabric tries to interpret your template. So these are not specific to the resources you are deploying, but are something with the language of your template. So a syntax error, or trying to refer to a parameter that doesn't exist, or dependencies on a resource that doesn't exist. Something that the ARM fabric can interpret by itself without having to reach out to a resource provider to get any resource specific information. These sort of failures are going to come back very quickly and should really be limited to something that's wrong with the actual syntax of your template. These whilst frustrating are usually fairly quick to be able to change, test and then make sure your template's working as expected. The second type of errors which are in-flight errors are those where the ARM fabric has to reach out to the resource provider before it gets an error. So when you run your template, the fabric itself doesn't know about a, all the specific resources. Each resource implements its own provider, which ARM reaches out to, to go and deploy that resource. And so that provider has its own errors. It has its own validation of you know, that you're passing in a valid SKU for a virtual machine, or you're passing in a valid region for a resource. These aren't known about by the, by the ARM fabric at the time you deploy, but are when they reach out to the provider. These errors can take a little longer to occur, particularly if you're deploying complex resources that have multiple components. It may actually go ahead and deploy some components and then fail on a later component because of the issue you've seen. So these can take a lot more time for you to find the error and your cycle of fixing this and testing it and so on can take longer as well. So let's have a look at how both these type of errors might manifest. If you're deploying your resources at the command line, then this is usually going to be the first place where you find an error. We've got two templates here configured to generate errors. The first one is a pre-flight error and the second is an in-flight. Let's have a look at how they manifest when you run them in the command line. So for our pre-flight error, we've got a syntax error in our template. We've dropped a T off the function concatenate. Fairly simple, but not an uncommon thing when you're developing a template. If we try and run that template, this will come back with an error very quickly because it's able to diagnose and, and find the problem at the time it tries to interpret the template rather than having to reach out to any resource providers. What we get back at the command line is an error message, which in this case is pretty helpful for finding out what the actual problem is. It tells us that the template function conca without the T on the end is not valid. And so we know we need to go and look at that to fix it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't give us any line number for the error, which would have been beneficial, but hopefully we can at least go on a search for the template for this misspelled function. Now you can actually test for pre-flight errors with a separate command which just runs these pre-flight checks and doesn't do anything else. So instead of using the new AZ resource group deployment command, we can use the test AZ resource group deployment command. This will give us the same output back, it will give us the, the error message that we're seeing here. But all this is doing is, is running those pre-flight tests, it will not move on to deploying the resources if the template passes those tests. This can be quite useful if you're trying to do some sort of automated testing or um, run some tests before you do a deployment, those sort of things. So it's just something to be aware of. So now the second error we've got here is an in-flight error. So we've got a template, we're deploying a storage account. And what I've done is I've passed in for the SKU of the storage account an invalid SKU. So in this case, premium GRS. So premium storage doesn't have a geo-redundant storage option. So this is not a valid SKU. However, this is a resource specific thing the ARM fabric itself doesn't know that this is invalid, so it has to pass it to the resource provider, and then the resource provider will return the error. That can take a little bit longer, as I said, particularly if there are multiple different resources in your template. ARM doesn't check every resource before it deploys. It starts running through your template in the order you specified, and will only show the error for the specific resource when it reaches that resource. So if you've got a lot of resources, it can take some time before you know your template isn't going to work. Now if we run this, this storage account is the only resource in this template. So this will actually return pretty quickly. And it will give us an error message that has some more information than the pre-flight error. Because this has gone to the resource provider, it's actually been committed to the API. 
then we do get some extra information about what we passed in as parameters to the template, as well as the error message we get back from the resource provider. You can see that's been provided in a JSON format because it's come back from the provider API. And so ARM is just passing on the error message. It's not doing any sort of interpretation of what the error might be. Now here, this message is pretty clear on what the problem is. And so we could very easily go and look at our template and figure out where we've used that SKU and make the change. The helpfulness of the error message is very much down to the resource provider. So some of them are gonna be very good some of them are perhaps not so good at helping you find the problem. So it is dependent on the resource provider and the resource providers are created by the different product teams themselves. So the quality of the error messages and the debugging options might vary between, between different teams. Now it is possible to get some additional debugging information at the command line. To do that, we need to switch the deployment debug log level. So there's a parameter for the new AZ resource group deployment command where we can set that. And we have the option to add additional debugging for the request content, so the content we're sending in, the response content, or all, so we get both of those back. If I set this to all, and we'll run it. And what you'll notice is you don't actually get any additional information back at this point. Whilst it has done some extra debug logging, you have to go to another step to retrieve this information. So to do that, we're going to use the get az resource group deployment operation command, which will go and grab the actual deployment operation from the API and give us that information. All we need to do to pass that in is pass in the deployment name and the resource group name, and it will go and grab that for us. And this will give us back an object which has all of the information that was sent to the resource provider and then we got back from the resource provider. So if we have a look at the response object, we can see the error message that came back from the provider and look at any more details that might be in there that would be of interest to us. So this object can be used for you to dig into the problem a bit more. However, it's not the nicest things to use from the CLI and there are better options that we can use in the Azure portal. So let's hop over to the portal and have a look at how you can do some debugging through there rather than just through the CLI. In the Azure portal, if we go look at the resource group we try to deploy to, you will notice in the overview page that there is a deployments property. And in our case, it, will, it says one failed. So it will show you the number of deployments it's run and the amount that have failed. If you click on that one failed, or if you click on the deployments button on the left, it will take you to a page that lists all of your deployments. So you can see all the individual deployments and their status. And then if you click on the specific deployment you're interested in, you can see the operations of the deployment and a load of properties around it. So first in the middle, we can see the resources it tried to deploy, so where it reached out to the resource providers. We've only got one because we tried to create a storage account. On the left, we also have the option to see the inputs we passed to the template when we ran it, the outputs if there are any, and the actual template that was run. If we click on operation details next to the specific resource we're interested in, then we get even more information back. And this is the same information we saw that came back when we used that debug option in the CLI but it's much nicer to read and we can see there called out in the particular error message the information we got back that indicated that the that the SKU we selected was not valid. If we had lots of different resources that we had deployed, you would see in here a long list of those and you would see which ones have been successful and which ones had failed and you could go in and have a look at those. If you were using nested templates, which we'll look at in a future episode, then this tool would allow you to dig through that nesting and to see which particular resource within your nested templates had failed, which is really useful. You can also use this page to actually watch your deployment while it's in progress if you want to see what it's doing, which can be quite helpful if you're waiting on something to finish. You also have the option here to redeploy, so rerun the same deployment again if you want to. Obviously, if it's failed and you haven't changed anything, it's unlikely that's going to fix the problem, but there have been occasions where transient problems mean that if you run it again, it will work fine and so you can trigger that through here if you want to. You can also download all this information so you can have it locally to run through if you wish. This is generally where I get my debug information about running templates, particularly if I am running the template itself through another tool, not through the CLI. So the most common way is I'm running this through Azure DevOps as part of a deployment pipeline. Then the CLI feedback I get is through Azure DevOps pipelines, which isn't the nicest thing to read. and doesn't always have all the information. So I can go to the actual resources in the portal and I can have a look through the information and see what's going on there and hopefully find my problem.
The Inputs tab on here also comes in pretty useful in that case because quite often I'm using the Azure DevOps pipeline to generate some inputs and so I might not actually know what the inputs that were sent to it are. If I use the Inputs tab here, it shows me what was actually sent to the template and I can use that to check whether or not what my pipeline is sending is actually what I expected or if there are some problems there or even if a variable isn't actually being generated and it's blank. One thing to bear in mind with this UI is that you're only going to get this information if either your template has succeeded its deployment or it's failed in an in-flight check. If you fail a pre-flight check, it will never have reached the API for this to actually show any information, so you won't see the deployment in here at all. But there are going to be times where the debug information you get back is not going to get you the answer you need. And so I just want to go through a few extra tips that I had around debugging when you've got to that point. Firstly, templates can be really complicated. And so what's often important is finding which part of the template your error actually occurs in. And so to do this, if I've got to the point where I can't find that out through the debug information, I will start looking to break down my template into individual sections to narrow down where the problem is and help me focus on fixing it in that particular resource rather than having to try and figure out which of my many resources I'm deploying the error is actually in. So breaking down your template into small chunks and being able to focus on those can be really, really helpful. Secondly, if you're not sure whether your use of functions in the template is actually generating the information you need, you could have a look at actually outputting your functions in the output section. This will give you the information back as to what your functions are actually generating, so you can confirm whether that is a valid name or it does meet your requirements and so on. Otherwise, it can be a little bit opaque to see what your functions are doing. So use the output section to help you with that. A step on from that is to look at using the what if tool that we looked at last week. So by using what if, you can have it actually interpret the template and show you what the template is going to do. You can look at all the properties of your resources that might have been generated by functions or by properties you pass into the template, um, any loops that you've added and so on, and you can add those in. And you can see all that in the interpreted state that the template is actually going to run. And if you look through these properties, you might be able to see where the problem is rather than trying to do that from looking at your template, which hasn't been compiled. Lastly, if you've been spending hours looking at a problem, you're getting nowhere, just take a break. There have been so many times where I've been looking at a problem, I cannot find the issue, I'll go away and have a drink or finish for the day and come back tomorrow. And immediately after I've had some rest and time away from the issue, I find the problem. This sort of thing is especially important for things like ARM templates where there's a lot of information, there's a lot of different strands you could follow and you can get caught up in all that. Take some time away and you'll have to come find you'll come back and fix the problem quite quickly. And so that's a very quick run through of how you can debug your ARM templates. Having a template not deploying generate errors can be a really frustrating experience. If you apply a methodical approach to looking through your, for your issues, use some of the tips I've mentioned here. Hopefully you can quickly find your problem, resolve it, and move on to creating the next resource. Next week, we're going to have a look at using loops in templates to see how we can generate multiple resources. Hopefully I'll see you there. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.